Who's going to come out on top? Klopp's wreck it Ralph strategy or the precise tactics of Pep Guardiola and Arteta? Well, right now it's all up to Liverpool. With just nine games standing between Jurgen Klopp and an epic conclusion to his time at Anfield, especially after Sunday's results. It was the perfect scenario for the Reds, wasn't it? They bagged a well-earned victory against Brighton at Anfield, which were about to break down, while both Manchester City and Arsenal just managed to draw at the Etihad, nudging Liverpool to the league summit with 67 points, two ahead of Arsenal and then three clear of Manchester City. We've mentioned that the win against Brighton was well-deserved, but was it a walk in the park? Far from it. So, before we do get into the analysts, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for daily Liverpool content. Isn't it a relief that the days of dealing with a long injury list are now a thing of the past? Sure, we're still waiting for Curtis Jones, Diego Jota, Alisson, Trent and a few others to make their comebacks, but seeing Jurgen Klopp put together a strong starting lineup that instantly boosts your confidence in snagging those three points is truly reassuring. And that's exactly what Klopp did for the Brighton match. Kelleher took his place between the posts, with Virgil van Dijk holding down the fort at centre-back alongside Jarrell Quansar, who retained his spot due to Ibrahima Kanate's unavailability. On the flanks, Connor Bradley took up the right-back position, while Joe Gomez slid into the left-back after Andy Robertson was sidelined due to an injury picked up on international duty. The midfield featured Wataro Endo as the pivot, with Alexis McAllister and Dominic Soboslai playing as the right and left number eights, respectively. Up front, Luis Diaz, Darwin Nunes and Mo Salah led the attack. While the starting lineup was pretty much what every Liverpool fan could have hoped for, the opening minute of the game told a completely different story. Stick with us here. Mo Salah played a free role in yesterday's game, moving deep to collect the ball and occasionally shifting into central areas to spark creativity. This tactic primarily allowed Connor Bradley the freedom to make runs forward, utilising the spaces either by cutting inside or overlapping with Salah. You can see this strategy unfold in the very first moments of the game, as we'll show you here. This adjustment was a key reason Liverpool kept putting pressure on Brighton's goalkeeper, but let's park that discussion for a moment. First, let's explore how this strategy left the Reds' right flank more exposed to counter-attacks. It's common knowledge that Liverpool likes to attack and press forward in numbers to overpower their opponents. Doing so effectively requires a solid rest defence strategy to minimise the risk of counter-attacks. Additionally, having players with the right attributes to handle such threats is crucial. On the left side, Joe Gomez has consistently shown excellent timing in his pressing moves, along with physicality and speed necessary to cover ground. The right side, however, felt the absence of Canate's defensive prowess, particularly noticeable with Simon Adringa causing chaos in the first half against Jarrell Quansar. With both Salah and Bradley pushing forward, Quansar often found himself alone against the highly agile Angra. With the Reds' tendency to always be at the end of the game's first big chance, this imbalance led to Liverpool conceding the first goal, a stunning strike from Danny Welbeck just a minute into the game. Brighton quickly picked up on Liverpool's vulnerability on the right, making it a focal point of their strategy by drawing in Liverpool's press or regaining possession and targeting that weakness. Adingra continued to be a thorn in Kwanzaa's side throughout the game. Brighton stuck to their strategy for nearly the entire match, and if you take a look at their attack, concentration and heat maps, you'll see how much they focus on exploiting Liverpool's right flank. This was partly because Joe Gomez really secured his side of the pitch using smart pressing and positioning to cut off the passing lanes. The Joker, as we fondly call him, once again stood out in the left-back role, providing indispensable in Klopp's quest for the title. Despite a shaky first half, Jarrell Quansar improved as the game progressed, effectively reducing the threat from the Ivorian in the second half. Although initially Quansar seemed to struggle when Liverpool didn't have possession, his ability with the ball didn't go unnoticed. Indeed, he emerged as one of Liverpool's key players for advancing the ball, particularly with his carry. Earlier, we touched on how Salah's role was pivotal for Liverpool, particularly in the first half, so let's delve deeper into that. In the game's first 25 minutes, Liverpool racked up an XG of 0.34, and you might be surprised to learn that Mo Salah was responsible for 0.32 XG of that. His freedom to move around wreaked havoc on Brighton's defence. His constant movement disrupted their back line and created space for Bradley. By dropping back to link up play, Salah helped Liverpool maintain possession. His neck for finding gaps and getting into scoring positions could have easily seen him net a hat-trick within the first 30 minutes, if not for a mix of poor finishing and bad luck. 
Still skeptical? Consider this. Salah had the highest expected threat received with 0.77, making him the top player in terms of potential to score. Despite a bumpy start and Salah's near misses, the Reds kept up the pressure, leading to a game-tying goal from Luis Diaz at the 27th minute. Speaking about Lucho, how good was he yesterday? It's true it took him a bit of time to find his rhythm, but once he did, he terrorised Brighton's defence. With seven attempts to dribble past opponents, two crucial passes, and an expected threat of 0.37, Diaz proved to be Liverpool's second major source of danger throughout the match. You might be thinking that Mo Salah was the biggest threat on the field, given all we've discussed, right? Surprisingly, that wasn't the case. Instead, Alexis McAllister took the spotlight with a standout performance in the right centre mid position. In what turned out to be one of the most memorable games in a Liverpool jersey so far, and ironically, against his former team, McAllister showcased an impressive array of passing skills. From perfectly executed long balls from deep positions to Nunes, to medium-range lofted passes over the defence to Salah, as you can see in this image. McAllister was instrumental in breaking down Brighton's defence, particularly with his sharp half space passes. In one instance, he noticed Bradley's dash into the penalty area and sent a perfectly weighted ball right to the right back. The Argentine was behind five major opportunities created from open play, three of which came from smart, finely tuned passes into the first half space. One of these brilliant passes was the assist for Mo Salah's winning goal. Moreover, with 34 of his 64 passes going forward, McAllister emerged as the top player for advancing the ball for his passing, highlighting his pivotal role in Liverpool's attacking strategy. Without a doubt, Alexis McAllister has been one of Liverpool's standout players in recent times. In the absence of Trent Alexander-Arnold's creative flair, the Argentine has risen to the occasion, showcasing his dynamic passing abilities across various phases of the game. For those eager to dive deeper into what makes McAllister such a pivotal figure, don't miss our detailed analysis on him. We are confident you will find it both enlightening and entertaining. While McAllister stole all the spotlights, let's not overlook another midfielder who deserves a nod, Dominic Subozlai. It's true, the Hungarian may have had a quite a match by his standards, yet his relentless work rate played a crucial role in maintaining Liverpool's pressure on the opposition. Positioned as a left central midfielder, Sabozlai had fewer opportunities to influence the game directly with the ball at his feet. Nonetheless, he began to make his mark as the game progressed into the second half. At one point, Sabozlai dropped back to collect the ball, then drove forward into the attacking third, cleverly setting up Darwin Nunes on the left channel with a precise pass. Just a minute after making an impact on the left, Sabozlai shifted to the right and dropped deep to collect the ball. Pushing forward, he then delivered a spot-on pass to McAllister, who set up Salah with a game-winning assist. With the comeback done, and with the stakes sky-high, one might assume that any team would opt to slow the game down, retaining possession to safeguard their lead. But that's not in Klopp's playbook. Instead, the last 20 minutes of the match morphed into what resembled a high-paced basketball game. The action was relentless, with both teams trading blows and creating opportunities to score another goal, among the standout moments was Salah's shot, which was brilliantly saved by Brighton's goalkeeper, preventing the Egyptian from doubling his tally. Of course, this type of edge of your seat football isn't for the faint-hearted, yet it's precisely the daring, never-back-down approach that defines this Liverpool team, isn't it? They embody the always-go-for-it mentality, regardless of the risk involved. The high-stakes, high-reward strategy starkly contrasts with the later match, between Manchester City and Arsenal, where both sides played cautiously, resulting in a goalless draw. For Liverpool supporters, watching Manchester City and Arsenal play out a stalemate would hardly be a chore, especially when it means the Reds move ahead in the title race, and that's precisely the scenario that unfolded. Now, with only nine games remaining, Liverpool are looking more and more like the favourites to clinch the title, marking a fitting climax to Klopp's tenure. What do you reckon? Have Liverpool's chances to secure the title been bolstered by the latest round of results? Will Klopp's strategy of daring to win at all costs bring the ultimate reward? Or will the most measured approaches of City and Arsenal prevail in the end? Well, share your opinions in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed our breakdown, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button for more Liverpool content. Thank you, and I'll see you all next time. Take care. Peace.